All right, so here we're going to look at how to go about creating your Google Voice account as well as using that account. So the first thing we're going to do here is I'm going to Google.com. I'm going to go ahead and sign in. And we're doing this for Tony, so we're going to go ahead. Uh, I've created an email account for her. Uh, this is just a Gmail account, so tony.vegan.curry. And this is, of course, be your email address. Alrighty, so now that I am all logged in under our account, we're going to go ahead and go to Google Voice. So I'm trying to search for it, but it, the website is just Google Voice, I'm sorry, uh, www.google.com slash voice. And you can see it right there. Google.com slash voice. Or just run a search for it, and that's the link we want. So, you have to be living in the U.S. for this to work. We all are, so no issues there. And you must uh, accept the terms of privacy policy. And I'm doing this for Tony, so I'm going to obviously accept those. Now, um, you do not want to port your mobile number. That's something you can do later if you like, if you, if you get into this and decide you really like it. Um, but for now, it's also going to cost you, uh, I think, $10 to do that, as well as an early, uh, could incur an early termination fee from your cell phone provider. So do not do that. You want a new number. So, new number. Alright, so this has to be the forwarding phone, most likely your cell phone, um, or whatever landline you're going to be used when doing this. Um, and that number cannot be tied to any other Google Voice account, so I couldn't put in my number or anything like that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put in Tony's cell phone number here. And let's see here. So it is 520-903-8840. And that is her mobile number, so you want to make sure you note that. And go ahead and continue. So it's adding the forward phone, and now it's going to, when I click Call Me Now, it's going to call her phone number, her cell phone number, and when she answers, she's going to have to type in that code, one, zero. You're going to get a different code. Um, she has to type that in. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and hit Call Me Now and have her um, uh, answer that, and when she does, you'll see it go right through. Alrighty, so she answered that, she typed in the 10, and now we're good to go. So now we can actually go ahead and pick our phone number. So this is the no this is your actual Google Voice number. So first thing I want to do is I want the zip code area, you can kind of do anything like that. Um, so if you want it here locally, you can say 8112, search numbers, whatever you want to do. And there's numbers to pick from, you can go to the next five, whatever you want to do. Uh, oops. Um, so when you do this, you can also try and add words or phrases. So if we want to say meat. All right, so here's all the numbers with the word meat in it. And you can go on, look at all the ones. So here's a nice uh, one. I'll go ahead. And, oh, that's in, in Peru, Indiana, though, so we don't want that. We want to keep it a local number for our um, students here. So I'm going to go 720 there and see if there's anything 720 meat in it. Oh, there is. Looky there. So for Brighton, we have a 720. 263-6328 number. So we're going to go ahead and select that one for Tony. So again, you can type in words and try and find those, or just go with a number you like. Alright, so we've successfully set up a Google Voice account, and her number is 720-263-6328. Alright, so now we have our Google Voice number. Let's go ahead and click Finish. So now this is the Google Voice page. Close out of that for now. And you can see we're still logged in as Tony up here. And we have our Google Voice. From here, we can call and text numbers, as well as from your Gmail account. And I'll show you that one here in just a little bit. So from this account, if you want to call somebody, just call, type in that number. And you're going to connect with something. And what this does is you don't actually call through the Google Voice website. What it's going to do is, if I say mobile and I say connect, it's going to first call Tony's cell phone. The moment she answers, it will then patch her with the number that I have typed in there. So it'll first call you and then connect you with the number that you typed in. And that's if you're using your cell phone. However, if you don't want to use minutes, we can actually use our Gmail account. Now, this is why we really want to use Google Chrome. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a new tab here, and let's go to Gmail mail.google.com so I'm already logged in so it's just logging her straight into Google 
So here, oh, she has no friends, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and call somebody. Looks like I need to download the voice plugin, and you're going to have to do this the first time or anytime you're on a new computer. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, if you're using a computer that I've been on or somebody else with voice has been using, this is probably already installed, but you might have to do it anyway. So, we'll go through and download that. It doesn't take very long at all. And I believe it's going to restart your um, Google Chrome browser. Maybe not. No, it doesn't look like it is. Okay. So, let's try this again. Oh, looks like it did. Okay. All right. So we downloaded that plugin. Let's go ahead and restart our browser. Okay, and let's sign in. So go back to Google. Tony's logged in. Let's go into Gmail. And now we install that plugin. Let's see if it works now. So I push call, and here's our box. So let's call, let's see, here's call the office, 720. Uh, no, that's not our number. 303-794-2302. I plug it in, and I make that call. Now, this is calling on the headset that I'm uh, that I'm currently using. I'm going to end that phone call. Um, so you just make all your calls directly from your Gmail account. Just click the phone call button, it'll pop up, you type in the number, and you hit send. That's it. Nothing else. Make all your calls from your computer using your computer headset. This way you don't use any of your cell phone minutes, and it all gets filtered through that phone number. So that's how you make the calls using Google Chrome and your Gmail account with your voice. Now, let's look at some of the other features of voice. I'm already logged in, so it's going to go straight to my account. Now, I can always text numbers, which is really cool. So if you're having trouble getting a hold of a student or something like that, and you know they might have a cell phone number, or if you, if you have their cell phone number, you can send a text. You just type in your message right there, and the number, and hit send. Now, I use this a lot because I'm a lot faster typing on the computer than I am on my cell phone. So I use this a lot to send text to pretty much everybody. Um, but let's look at some of the features that we have available to us in uh, Google Voice. So first off, we have this here. Whenever you get, somebody calls here and they leave a message, it's going to leave the message. Uh, it's going to tra uh, transcribe the message as well. So you can read the message before you even listen to it. Now, sometimes they're pretty funny because it's not 100% 100% accurate. If you have someone who, like me, talks really fast, or um, maybe they have an accent like Tony or something like that, and it just doesn't quite pick up on the words, then uh, it'll be a little a little funny. Some of those are pretty fun, uh, fun to watch. And you can play that right here and listen to that on the computer as well. Um, but the big thing I want to show you is in the settings. So if we go to the sprocket here and go to settings, all right, this is the main thing I want to look at. So forward calls to. This is somebody, if somebody calls that number, 720-263-ME, if somebody calls that number, then this is what, right now, it's going to forward that phone call to Tony's cell phone. Now, if we don't want that, because we don't want her ringing uh, her cell phone, we can take that off and instead go to G Google Chat. So now, it'll only go to her email inbox right here. So if you call that number, if anybody called that number, it would ring in here. And you'd get a little pop-up down here in the corner of your window that says, so-and-so is calling, do you accept? If you do, it will take you right into here, and it'll go through. Now, one note on that. If your email is not open, it will not ring. So your Google Chat must be open, or sorry, your Gmail account must be open for it to ring there. So what I do in Chrome here is I just right-click this tab, and I pin it. So it gets really small up there, and I don't even notice it's up there anymore. And then if anybody calls me, it'll go right to there, and I'm good to go. So, and you can also add more things, and you can forward it to both phones. So it'll ring both the cell phone 
and the the uh, Gmail account. However you want to do that. Um, but again, I don't like going to my cell phone, so I just run it to Google Chat. Um, now, actually, I kind of lied there. I do have it go to both because what I do is I go over here to the calls button. I'll go back to the other one. I go back to the calls one. Now, I suggest you take call screening off only because if you leave it on, then they will have to say their name if you select that. Um, but it, it can be useful if you do leave it on. Basically, what this does, if you do have call screening on, um, it reverts back to a 1995 answering machine. So you can pick up the phone and answer the phone, but not answer the call. Instead, instead, what's going to happen is you're going to be listening to them leaving you a message. And it, you can push, I believe it's number two, I don't remember what it is. You can push a number, and it will answer the call, just like the answering machines in 1995 when you could do that. So that is a useful tool. Um, caller ID, you can display your Google Voice number or the caller's number. Um, I played this back and forth. When it's displayed my Google Voice number, if it rings on my cell phone, if I see my voice number, then I know somebody's calling my voice number, so it's probably a student, and I do or don't answer depending on day and all that sort of stuff. Or you can display the caller's number, um, you know, if you want to see that. Uh, outgoing caller ID. So this is if I text a Google Voice number from a phone. So you're texting from your forwarding phones. What's it going to show on the caller ID? Will it sh show your mobile phone number or your Google Voice number? And that's just completely up to you. Uh, do not disturb missed calls. You can all do, th do that however you want. That's all pretty optional. Um, so now the voicemails and texts. Let's go back to that. This is something which I actually think is really cool. Is By default, Google Voice is going to override your standard voicemail. So now that I've created this phone, uh, phone account for Tony, she no longer has her AT&T voicemail. Now, you can um, turn this off if you wanted, but I actually really like it because what I do is I record a bunch of different greetings. I have one for my mom, one for my brothers, one for my friends, one for numbers that it doesn't recognize, and so on and so forth. So that way, depending on who calls me, they get a personalized voicemail greeting. I do this because I'm kind of a jackass and I think it's hilarious. Um, but you can have personalized greetings for whatever, it's, for whatever it is. So if a number calls in that I do not recognize as a contact, then it's most likely going to be a student or something like that. So then there's a professional greeting that will greet them. But then I create all the different greetings for everybody else. Um, when you get a voicemail, select this and it'll email it. So you saw the uh, transcribed recording. That will also be sent to your voicemail. So you don't ever have to actually go to this page. Uh, forward text messages. So this is something you can do. It'll forward the text, and then you can also um, forward the text to your cell phone if you want to do that as well. And then you can set up a voicemail pin as well. And Tony, she'll, she'll need to do that when she gets uh, reads or watches this. Alrighty. So that's it about for these ones. If you have any questions, let me know. You can go through set up groups and circles, and this kind of goes back to the voicemails. So your anonymous callers, the ones that you don't recognize, you can set up a personal voicemail greeting for them, uh, for your friends, your circles, whatever it is. Um, now, there's a billing thing here, and don't worry about that, because all calls in the U.S. are free. All calls to and from the U.S. are free. So um, you don't need, you don't have to have any credit in here. This is for um, Inter international calling. The only time you need money is for international calling and they have their rates down here. You can type in a number and look at the rates. So you can do that for international calling. It might be cheaper than your cell phone or something is. So it might be something to look into. Um, your account is simply that. It's just your account. It's all set already. You might want to double check it though. Call widgets. This only is something only if you need um, or if you have your own website. None of us do for work. So you don't need to worry about this uh, if you don't want to. Or if you do, let me know and we can uh, discuss that outside of this. Uh, I believe that's about it. Uh, the only thing I didn't mention that I can think of is uh, forwarding. Okay, so I lied here. I just noticed it says activate Google Voicemail on this phone. So until you click that link, your traditional voicemail will stay standard. 
It's not until you activate Google Voicemail on the phone that it will override your account. Um, so I click that. I really like it. And if you do activate it, you can always cancel it if you want to try it out for a little bit. All right, and also under the phones, if you click Edit, this is a nice thing. If you do have it forwarded to your cell phone or even your email, you can edit this and go to Advanced Settings. The nice thing about the Advanced Settings and what this really does for us is you can t tell it when to ring. Always on weekdays, never weekdays, and custom schedules. So what I do is if you're going to be using this for work only, I would use a custom schedule. You want it never on the weekends, unless you're working weekends for some reason. And on the weekdays, use your custom schedule. Now as this says, do not ring the phone. So what I'm going to say is, do not ring my phone between midnight and 8 o'clock. So in that range, this will not ring. And also, do not ring the phone between 4.30 and midnight. So that way, you, the phone will only, if somebody calls this voice number, it will only forward that call between the hours of 8 and 4.30. It will only call my cell phone, or in this case, Tony's cell phone, between the hours of 8 and 4.30. So that if anybody calls outside of the normal work hours, it will not be ringed. It'll go straight to voicemail, and I can answer that and deal with it the next day. And then if someone, you can ask, ask uh, this one as well, which is kind of neat. If you have more than one forwarding phone, say a landline or something, if it, if, you, if it rings your cell phone and you don't answer it, it can ring a different phone before going to voicemail, or it can go straight to voicemail. So if I s go ahead and save that, so now it's forwarding to her cell phone between 8.30, sorry, 8 and 4.30. She can take that off if she wants to, and also forwarding it to her chat uh, or her email account over here. One last thing that I wanted to mention, and this is for Google Chrome only, if you're using the Google Chrome Internet Browser, which I highly suggest, is you can download what's called the Google Voice Extension. So let's look at that. Alrighty, so it's in the Chrome Web Store right here. I'm going to go ahead and install it on this computer. Um, whatever, you, whatever computer you're working at, I suggest you install it. So it's the Google Voice extension. You can just run a search, and it'll pop right here. And I'm just going to go ahead and add it to Chrome, and we'll see what it does. So basically, what this does for me, I'll go ahead and close out of that. I can actually just close this whole tab. I don't need it anymore. Regardless of what website I am at, I have my voice button up here now. So if I go over here and let's say we are playing around on school and we're in here and we're doing work or whatever, right now the little one up here in the corner tells me that I have a voicemail. So I can click on that and I can read it and listen to it from this button without ever having to go to the voice page. So by installing this into the Chrome browser, you actually never need that voice page unless you want to ins you know, pay money or things like that for international, whatever. But with, for just the basic functions, you never need the voice page. You can see and listen to your voicemails from here. You can also make your calls and send your texts from this plugin. So this is all I ever actually use. As long as your email is up in the corner, then when you call somebody with your mobile, or sorry, with Google Talk, I'm going to set it to Google Talk. I call a number. I did it again. 303-794-2302. I call a number with Google Talk. I hit connect. It's first going to ring. It's ringing in my ears right now. And I can say answer right here. I answer that. It's going to call. Ah, it's loud in my head. Stop calling. So, you can use this to make all of your calls and to send any texts that you want. So again, this is the Google Voice extension that you can install into Google Chrome. Definitely suggest using this. It's all I use. And if you don't remember the Google Voice website, you can just click on that and say, go to Inbox, and there you are. All right, I think that's about it. If you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to let me know, and we can take care of it, whatever it is. Thanks.